Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are, are tackling the subject, martial arts should be fun, including classes. Classes should be fun. Yeah. All right, stick around. We're going to have some fun talking about the fun that you should be having while you're having fun training. If you're new to the show, welcome. My name is Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host here, co-host Andrew Adams. Andrew, how are you? I'm great, as I'm I am great. most days. You usually are great. Yeah. And and anyone who knows Andrew might expect his common refrain. Andrew, how are you? I'm great. Because? Oh, I woke up handsome today. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> If you're new to what we do here at Whistlekick, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find all the things that we do there. Our store links to all the different projects, products, services. Most of what we do, the best stuff we do is free. And then if you want to go deeper, we do have plenty of paid options available. And you can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% on just about all of those paid options. Now, this we- uh, this show, Martial Arts Radio, uh, uh, we've been around. How long have we been doing this? eight years. We're not eight eight year as ridiculous as that may seem. And we are frequently lauded as the top traditional martial arts podcast in the world, which is kind of cool. I think that's the first time I've ever said that on the air. And it's a little uncomfortable, but one of my resolutions for 2023 is to be not resolution, but I'm trying to be a little more uh, accepting of the hard work that the team puts in and just say, you know what, let's own it. We're doing great. If you want to go deeper on this or other episodes, you can go to whistlecakemartialartsradio.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You could tip us. You can search by transcript of the episodes. What was that episode that somebody said that thing? It's all over the there. Okay. Uh, what else do we do? Well, there's a ton of stuff that we do. And if you want to show your support for our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, oh, there's a key part for today's episode, you can do so in a lot of ways. You could maybe tell somebody about this episode. Do you know someone that thinks martial arts should be boring and effective 100% of the time? You should send them this episode. And then when they complain, you should send me their feedback. And then I will tell them that they're silly. Okay. Uh, You could also make a purchase and you might consider joining our Patreon. We were talking on First Cup, patreon.com slash whistle kick. We were talking on First Cup this morning because yes, we have a martial arts morning show as well where... uh, I was mentioning that yesterday, Andrew confirmed one of the most long-standing, high-profile guests we have ever tried to get on the show. Uh, It's been so many years that we've been trying to do this. I tried to do this. Uh, Your predecessor tried to do this. You've been trying continuously since you came into this position and you made it happen. Now, if you want to know who that name is, there's only one way to find out. Uh, You are Andrew or Jeremy, Mm -hmm. or you support the Patreon. And even at the lowest tier, the $2 a month tier, we tell you who's coming up on the show. I will also say there is another way. If If you want to send me $150, I'll tell you who it is. I, th- I think that's reasonable. If somebody wants Jeremy, to... Jeremy, I'll, I'll split it with you. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. If someone would rather spend $150 than $2, then fine. I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> all right. Now, our biggest fans know that in support of Whistlekick, you can check all the things that we do at the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. If you've been listening for a while, watching for a while, if you come to our events, if you really value what we do, you probably are family. Maybe not the biological definition of family, but we are a family and we do support each other. And we appreciate the support that all of our extended family shows us, whether it's Patreon or reviews or any of the other things you can find at that page, whistlekick.com slash family. All right, Andrew. Fun. Fun. So before before we go too far in this general statement, and, and the first version of this episode title was martial arts classes should be educational and entertaining. Mm-hmm. And of course, we, we shortened it up. But that statement, especially if we emphasize the and, suggests something that I think is pretty important that we start with. Martial arts classes should be educational 
Nobody's going to argue that, I think. Yeah, sure. And entertaining. And that's where the maybe controversy is too strong of a word, but that's where the discussion really happens, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Why is it that some people think martial arts shouldn't be fun? I I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. Because it, it, to me, it's very foreign to have something that we do. Because with rare exceptions, most of us, I would, I would garner to say that the majority of the people listening to this podcast or watching on YouTube are not full-time martial arts instructors that sure. make their living from martial arts. Most of you listening or watching Statistically, are... Statistically, this is true. Are, are casual, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. No, no. Martial no. artists, right? Yeah. So for you, majority of us, it's a hobby. Right? It's something we do because we enjoy it, right? It is but part it, of our lifestyle. It is not our profession. Correct, correct. And if something isn't fun, and I say this all the time, if it's not fun, don't do it. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that fun is exclusive to not being anything else right um i use the expression all the time that i am grown up but i'm not a grown up i can be child like am i allowed to say that yeah sure <laughs> like i'm child i'm being self-deprecating i'm not childish you know like i can still I think be you missed my joke i uh, perhaps perhaps no no you can't i'm short you, yeah, it's true. You are not grown up. You're right. You're right. Uh, but I don't think that it has to be one thing or the other. I think it can right. be both. Well, I, I've got a theory of where that comes from. Okay. School. Mm. How many people enjoyed school, not because they enjoyed learning, but because it was fun? From what I recall of school, kindergarten was fun. First grade was a little less fun. Second grade, third, and, and the fun decreased. Yep. And it com continued to decrease. And then I got to college and I think it leveled off. Actually, it probably went up a little bit because I, I had some, some classes that were really enjoyable. Some say as well. But in the West, we are, and, and I, I say, I make that distinction because I can't speak to, you know, educational systems outside of that. But my understanding of Western public education is we generally st strong arm subjects down people's throats. We, we tell them what they have to learn and we do so in a way that is less enjoyable. And because we're going to get to this, I'll, I'll plant the seed now, less effective, hmm. right? And so I think a lot of us come away from that saying, well, the best way to learn stuff is to just have it drilled into your brain over and over again with memorization and regurgitation, and that's boring. And there are martial arts schools that do that. That, okay, you come in, we're going to drill, 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 memorize, 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 go home and practice, practice, practice. There's your homework, and then come back in for the test. Yeah. And it follows that, um, that Prussian educational model, if anybody has has dabbled in in that history and it's it is essentially um this this word may be triggering to people but it's still the best word i know it's an indoctrination hmm. system and if we think back to because we've had folks on who trained back in the 60s i don't know actually i think the only person i know that we've had that may have trained in the 50s was june Ree. Did he train yeah. in the fifties? Probably. Yep. I think, I think he did. So he might be the only person we've had on the show. So we can go back at least that far. And when we talk about martial arts training, it followed a very militarized drill, 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 mm -hmm. memorize, regurgitate, test sort of philosophy through a, some of those early years. And then it sounds like it got fun in the sixties. Because there was a lot of cross trainings, people were like, "Oh, you do this, you do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. right?" And then that started to get pulled away through the seventies, eighties, and nineties, and then we're seeing it become fun again. Now that doesn't mean that martial arts training couldn't or wasn't fun in the seventies and eighties and nineties. But when I think about, I mean, you trained back then. When I think about most of my training and a lot of the schools that I went to, the focus was on 
the drill and the repetition. Yeah, and the learning. And supposedly the learning, right? The push was learning. And I was very fortunate in the school that I went to because it was, and again, a little more foreshadowing, uh, not only was it a wonderful education, but it was fun. It was often quite fun. But here we are now, and the world's a little bit different. And back then, people would, would stick around training if it was educational and fun. And now people want fun and education. Mm. That's an interesting distinction. Yep. So when we, when we consider that, do, does that, does that make sense? Do you think that's why so many people would look at a class and say, well, that's just fun. Like that's just, those are just games. You ever, yeah. you ever had adults dismiss, have you ever tried to teach a class of adults a game and they start to dismiss it as if it's useless? Oh, absolutely. And, and on the reverse side, I've had parents who are mm. critical of, and I'm going to put this in air quotes for those listening, games that we play in the kids' class. Like, I brought my kid to, to karate class to learn karate, not to learn games. And they don't understand that even though it's a game, the kid is still learning something. Like, your kid can't skip. Like, there are kids these days, and this is, I'm not exaggerating. There are kids who have grown up, who are in the fifth grade, who I'm like, all right, we're going to skip around the room. They don't know how to skip. Okay. Mm. Your child doesn't know how to do a jumping jack. They are not, they're mm. trying to figure out how their arms and legs work. Yeah. Like the, even well, let's the, just skip over all that and teach them how to be lethal. Yeah, exactly. Like it just, ugh. cause that works. But the answer to your question is yes. Yeah. I've had adults that I've tried to teach games to that are like, you know, whatever. So let's, let's unpack fun. Let's talk about the purpose of fun and why both. And, and I know we're unified in this cause we, you know, for, for for the audience, if you don't know, Andrew and I collaborate on a number of things, you know, all in weekend and free training day Northeast. And so we spend a lot of time talking about culture and fun and, and how to present information, et cetera. What role, because you teach, you teach martial arts, mm -hmm. you teach drumming. I've taught martial arts. I've taught gymnastics. I've taught parkour. I've taught... Uh, CrossFit. weightlifting, bodybuilding, CrossFit, you know, that, that sort of realm. So between the two of us, we've taught a bunch of different things to adults and children. Let's, let's start with the simplest possible question. In your experience, do people learn better in all the ways that you could say learn, understand, engage, retain, comprehend, yeah, yeah all this stuff. implement, mm -hmm. Do they learn better when things are fun? Absolutely. Unequivocally, absolutely yes. Do you have any, if, if you would say, put a number on it, zero to 100% confidence that people learn better, they do those things better when things are fun, what percentage do you give it? Oh, 100%. Yes, 100%. Anybody who has ever taught, if you disagree with this, I, I would love to have some understanding why because I have taught over the years thousands of people different things. And I can say point blank that the more fun I make it, the better they do. Yep, absolutely. Without a doubt. Then why, I mean, we, we kind of kind of tackled why some people don't want fun. Ugh, ugh, that's a weird statement. But some people don't want fun. They don't want their kids to have fun. They don't want to go to class to have fun because they think that you can't be fun and serious. You can't have serious fun. And there's a phrase, and I, I know we've had it multiple times on the show, and I wish I had like an eidetic memory so I could tell you the episode number. But we've had people come on the show and talk about serious fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Watson was one. Ah, see, good. This is why I like yep. having you. And, and, and if you know Stephen Watson, that's a perfect way to describe that, man. He okay. has serious fun in everything he does. And, and there are people who, for whatever reason, don't want fun. They just want serious. A perfect example would be the dad from The Sound of Music. Hmm. I haven't watched that movie in so long. Right, he was very militant, and all he wanted was it not allowed to have fun, no singing, no dancing, none of this. Yeah. And when the children were introduced to those things, they learned so much more. Right. 
So I think, I, I think if we can, 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 have we made a strong enough case at this point that things should be fun? You know, not necessarily how you get there, but they yeah. should be. Right? Yes. Are there times in a class where fun gets out of control and you got to pull the reins back? Yes. Sure. Happens all the time. All right, you guys are being a little silly. Let's pull it back. There is a, there's a range of fun that matters, right? If it's too much fun, it excludes education. If it's not enough fun, it's just boring and it excludes education. Because remember, you can't make someone learn. You can, you can teach them, but you cannot make them learn. Learning is to some degree a choice. And the more engaged they are, the more practice they have, et cetera, the more they're going to learn. And so we, this is something that we need to remember. How then do we balance that? How do we know where the lines are? Okay, let's let's start there. Well, and actually, then how do we back, connect? I want to back a little bit. Like okay. before we talk about how to get there, let's talk about why there are classes mm -hmm. that aren't that way. And I and this will be a short sidebar, but uh, I think it's because instructors have not learned how to teach in a fun way. It's not that they don't want fun per se, but they have grown up in a culture that doesn't have that there. And so they are unaware of how to make that be something in their own classes. Yeah. Most of us, when we become martial arts instructors, we model what was presented to us as martial arts. Just as yep. most of us end up at some point as an, old, an adult looking around going, I am way more like my, my parents than I ever expected to be, right? Down to the wood paneling. <laughs> we, we, we mimic what we're shown. And so if we have instructors who know how to incorporate fun, we're probably going to incorporate some fun. But if we grew up in a more regimented, perhaps militant martial arts upbringing, as a lot, most of us trace our martial arts history back to someone who served in the military. Mm. So it is not uncommon that that's what we, we start from at some point. And maybe some people made some changes. But we also need to remember that, I'm sorry to say, most martial arts instructors do not progress far as instructors. Where they start and where they end when they stop teaching usually are not that far off. And as a, as a side note, that's why we've launched our, our teacher training and certification division. Yep. Yep. That's why I, we have that. Because I was we want that people to, to become better instructors. It doesn't require a tremendous amount of time and effort. But just recognizing that, that you can have fun. And guess what? Most of that class is structured around games. Yep, yep, absolutely. Because uh, it's how people learn. So I kind of lost my train of thought. You got Let's talk about how to bring that in, how to bring okay. it into your class. Okay. So if, if we're, well, you know what, Let, let's, before we do there, the, the, the edges, too much fun, not enough fun, how to recognize that. I, I want to get there first sure, and sure, then sure. we can talk about the, the middle of the bell curve. What's it look like if you're teaching and people are having too much fun? Well, typically, I mean, I'm thinking these typically occur in classes of kids, generally, um, generally uh, because adults have a hard time not being serious. Uh, but when you are no longer able to keep the children's attention focused on you, yeah. and it's focused on other stuff, that's when it's too much. If you can make what you're presenting fun and that the words and actions coming from you will continue the fun, you will have everyone's attention. Yeah. If the fun grows so much that they're able to have fun without you, now the fun becomes crosstalk among the students that's when you lose control. Yeah, because they're focused on something else other because, than... Right, right. If it happens in the adult class, it's the same thing. Adults will do the same thing, 
but it's more that their fun becomes conversation. Correct. That as, as we let the reins out, that as we give them some more freedom to self-determine what they're doing back and forth it, with their individuals, or usually for me, it's small groups, then they're not hearing your words, especially if it's a big class or a loud class. What about the other end? How do we know there isn't enough fun? Um, surprisingly, it, it, at least in an adult class, it can be the exact same thing. I, I was thinking I was thinking that too. Yeah. If your adult class is not paying attention to you because what you are presenting is so boring. Yep. And, th and, and this is why so many schools rely on new material to keep retention. Mm, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because new material, even presented boring, is still new material, and that will keep a certain personality type engaged. Yep. But the true test is, can I teach you Chungji, Heian, Pinyon, Shodan, Taikyoko, Shodan, for the 5,000th time, and have you engaged? Yep. Right? And, and for those of you who don't practice Korean or Japanese systems, um, you know, your first form. Low block punch, basically. Um, I know I'm not being entertaining enough. I'm not conveying enough fun or holding enough space with fun when people are looking around, when they're looking at the clock, Correct. when they're looking at their feet, when I don't have their attention because literally I am so boring that they don't need to exert any energy to consume what I am giving to them. Yep, yep, absolutely. This is where, uh, when folks get awfully long-winded in an explanation, that they try to explain too thoroughly, mm -hmm. which generally goes over people's heads. It's, All right, let's take this form and let's break it down step by step. All right, step out to the left, low block. All right, you want your knee over your toes and you're this and your back leg and you're this and your eyes should be here and your shoulders. So your much information. And this reminds me of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody's going, oh my God. How much more time is this? This is our first move. We're going to do the whole form like this. <laughs> Usually you get eight moves in because yeah. it takes that long. And you're looking at the clock as much as possible or maybe you have a a friend in class and you're making eye contact with them and they're making eye contact with you and you're like, oh my, this is not okay. This is boring. Yeah. I'm not getting anything out of this. No, no. Right? And when I'm teaching class, the only time when I'm in class, the only time I want students to be like jumping their eyes to the clock is when they're sparring me and they're hoping it's over soon. That's it. That's the only time. Or, or maybe you're doing some conditioning exercises like, all right, everybody hang in horse stance. Yeah. Right. Like that. It's yeah. There, there's an appropriate, there's a time when even if it, you're making class enjoyable, that's a, a common and even appropriate response. Now, are we saying that things should not be slow and methodical and that we shouldn't explain things? No, but you no. have to be smart about it. There's a balance, right? There's a, there's, there's, there's an effective dose. There's too little and there's too much. Yeah. Right. Here's a hint. It's not the same every class. It's not the same beginning to end of class. It's and something that in a, go ahead. It's it's not the same, even if you have the same students, the exact same students in class, it's going to be different one week from the next, even with the exact same students. This is where reading energy, and I don't mean like, you know, Reiki auras Chakra. sort of stuff. Yeah, it doesn't, not necessarily at that level, though, if you do have that kind of skill, you're even better at it. But just the recognition of where people's energy is at. Are they up? Are they low? If they're low, you have to bring them up. If they're up, you just have to keep them there. If they're too high, you got to bring them down. And being able to work that energy through what you say, how you say it, the drills you do, your body language, etc. Right? If you've ever seen me teach, you I know you've seen me teach, my voice is usually a little hoarse at the end. Mm -hmm. Because I... Keep a, I like to have a very high energy level with these people that I work with. What 
if someone is new to this concept, if someone says, okay, I'm with you, I, I, I understand it intellectually, but I don't know what it looks like, how can we get them to kind of practice incorporating fun? Does it mean you necessarily do games for an hour every class? I mean, no, it doesn't have to. No, no, it, it could be, but probably not. Depending, and I would say, depending on the students you have in class. If I'm teaching a three to five year old martial arts class, I'm, I'll tell you right now, it's probably going to be games. Ninety nine percent of the class. Yeah. Um, what what makes something a game? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, you know that consequence. Like, consequence. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. That's really all it has to be. So if we take, if we go back to that example of, all right, we're going to do move by move, step out, low block left, the game version of that, the first person to not be perfect in what they're doing mm -hmm. has X consequence. Yep. And it could be as simple as, or it could be, if you're not perfect, I'm going to tap you on the shoulder and you're going to go stand on the side and you're going to watch your else. Yeah. Who can get to the end of the form looking yep. like super good, right? Or you could do the whole thing as Sensei says as well. There are, there are so many ways you can do that. It becomes consequence. The consequences don't have to be extreme. It yeah. just connects a, a, an effort with uh, an outcome, right? One of the very best things about martial arts is that that doesn't inherently exist with the exception of free form partner movement, where if I'm doing a poor job, I'm getting punched in the face. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that's not how most of us model the majority of our classes. So just tacking on a consequence can make things more fun, quote fun for people. How else can we make things fun? Um, I mean, you, you can actually bring in games and play physical games. Yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned sensei says, senpai says, some of them says, some Teacher people just call it Simon says. Simon, call, I'm sure we'd call it just Simon says. Probably. Shout out yeah. to Simon. How do you know if it's fun? Here's a, I, I've got a really easy standard for this. I'm curious if you have one. Um, how do you know if it's fun? I mean, the kids are all engaged and enjoying it. Uh, I determine often what game I'm going to play when the kids are like, can we play this today? Like, obviously, that was fun for them. Yeah. Uh, here's mine if I'm having fun mm -hmm. because right. it's very rare that I'm having fun and they're not. In yeah. fact, I would say as the instructor, it's easier for them to have fun than for me to have fun yeah. because I've got so much more I've got to worry about. Yeah. They have to worry about them as individuals. I have to worry about all of them as a group and as individuals and their energy level and time and who has some compromised movement. Who, who's, you know, high rank, who's low rank, what have they worked on? What are the goals I'm trying to get out of this class? So if I can get through all that, if I can check all those boxes and enjoy my time, mm -hmm. it's incredibly rare they're not having fun. And guess what? That means sometimes I'm selfish and I do stuff that I find more enjoyable than yeah. others. I do that with the sword game. I, I, the I sword game? Oh, man. Do I have it? Oh. Okay. Have we done an episode just on different games? No. Not, we, we need to do that. We, you know what? We could not talk about the sword game right now, and we can record another. You know what? Let's, let's do that. In fact, I'm thinking of a few people, and I bet you are too. Okay. And you know what? We could bring them know. on for segments. All right. You've got five minutes to teach us all the games you know. All right. I'm making, I'm making a note right now. That's going to... That, there we go. We're Boom. doing an episode on games. That's coming if soon. If anybody wants to participate in that episode, reach out to us. Coming soon to a podcast player near you. Coming soon to a earbuds near you or Marshall screen or speakers. Games. So, um, yes, I, I, I agree. There are definitely some times where I play the game because I want to play that game today. Right. And sometimes I don't, you know, like we've talked about it in the past that when, when I'm teaching, like I've got to be on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't feel like it. But I still have to be on. So some maybe that's a day where we play jump rope in class at the end of class, yeah. you know. And I can just do this and you know vary it up and change the speed and you know. But the kids are yeah. still learning these concepts of how to see things and 
distancing and timing. I mean, all those things are useful, even though I'm only quote playing jump rope. There, there's one. There's one more thing that I want to bring in as it relates to fun, and I think this. And, and if you have other stuff to add, you know, by all means. But this is the last point I really want to make. If I think about the newer instructor, or frankly, the less skilled instructor. The thing that I have noticed about games and fun is that they can buy me time. If I'm losing the class, if they're not having fun, we could be 20 minutes into a 60 minute class and I know, you know what? This is not working. This doesn't happen to me as much anymore, but it used to happen quite often. Mm -hmm. I, I'm losing them. They're tuning out. They're looking at the clock. I, I know I'm... I'm, I'm going sideways here and I've got to do something to pull it back. I can play a game with them for five minutes and it's like hitting the reset button. Yeah. yeah. It's like starting class over. They're optimistic again. They give me the benefit of the doubt and it can give me a few minutes to bridge to the next thing. Mm -hmm. I could, and, and I could flip that too. I could say, all right, I, I know you guys are losing steam. I know that this is not the most exciting thing that we've ever done. And I will promise you, once we get through this, and I, and I, I got to give them some kind of, of definable goal. They get a treat. If we can yeah. get through this, you know, if, if everybody, if we can get everybody to learn this half of the form or whatever it is, we're mm -hmm. going to move on to something else. I promise you we'll have, we'll do, we'll have, we'll kind of rinse our brains. We'll have five minutes of, of game. But I need you to just really buckle down and focus with me right now. Right. So deferring fun or using fun as a transition, as a save, as a reset yep. can all work. Yeah. Or using it as a treat at the end. Like we're going to do this. If we once we're done this, this is what the fun thing we have coming later. Yep. Um, when you think about any list of things or set of things, movie, music, martial arts class, the two most important parts are the. Say it one more time. The most important part of any list set, it's the start and the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those Your intro, there, there's, there's, intro and outro. People lose memory in the middle and they come yeah. back up at the end. And there are studies on this. You can go back. You can do this research if you want. If you give somebody a list of 10 things, they are statistically more likely to remember the things at the beginning and the end. Yeah. Num if it's 10, they're not going to remember 5 and 6. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But they will remember 1 and 10. So if you end your class with something really fun, that's the thing the kid's going to get in the car and talk about. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Make it fun. What have, what have we missed? What, what else do we need to add on to this? Uh, don't be afraid to make it fun. I, th I think instructors, I, I genuinely think they sometimes feel that afraid to do that, but yep. that they are, losing stock with their students because they are not being serious enough. And I think that's a shame that people feel that way, but I do think that that is felt often. And, and this is, this is where we often see um, a bit of dissonance from the reality in instructors who are not good at this. And what will they say? Well, I refuse to compromise what I teach. I refuse to water it down. Yep. We teach traditional martial arts. Okay. It can be traditional martial arts with modern teaching methods. What you actually mean if you're saying that is, I refuse to evolve as an instructor. Yep. Yep. And that is your choice. If you I... want to teach mm -hmm. in traditional ways, I'm not going to say you're wrong. However, if you say, I teach in traditional ways, I refuse to evolve my teaching methodology, but I also want more students and I don't understand why I don't have them. Well, then I'm going to say, maybe you're wrong. Maybe yeah. those two things are in conflict because those two things are in conflict. Yep. And maybe you would consider changing them. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Right. And it's okay to change. Like it's okay to be one way right now and say, you know what, maybe I want to try something a little different and add something and change your teaching style. There's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Uh, I thought of one more thing I wanted to add. Yeah. And this is something that I'm not sure how many people have had this experience, but um, generally speaking, 
the classes that I've been in over the course of my martial arts career, I am just statistically towards the front of the room. I'm not always the highest ranked student, but often enough, which gives me a little bit of leeway. And as I got to know my instructors, I got to know where the gaps were. Where were the places I might be able to assist? Because, right? Senpai or, or, or you know, some kind of senior student, regardless of the, the system and the, the language, there is a responsibility there. And we often think about it, oh, that person's responsibility is when they are delegated to go take that person or that group or lead the warm up or whatever. Yeah. You know, your responsibility is so much deeper than that. Mm. And one of the things I took very seriously was how can I make this class better for everyone, including the instructor at this moment? And did I overstep at times? Yep. How do you find boundaries? You push them. But I definitely, people, people knew, people, especially in my, my last tenure in Taekwondo, people knew, hey, if Jeremy was there, we're probably going to have a fun time. Hmm. Because if, if I was feeling the, 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 cla the crowd, the class, if the energy was dipping a little bit, I would support the instructor who, that instructor, I, I, I love Master Rota, Grandmaster Rota now. He did a wonderful job of making things fun, especially for kids. But it didn't mean he had to be there solo. And he trusted me in that way because we built that kind of rapport. So if you find yourself at the front of the room, but not the very front of the room, there may be points in time where you can do so. And you know when it's appropriate. If you've been hanging around in that school for five, six years, you know. You know where the lines yeah. are. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I would say you're a fun guy. I'm a fun guy. We are both mushrooms. We are. We are. I've, I've even got. I've even got the smooth. You, but we both have the smooth uh, cap. Yep. We are. We have mushroom cap skulls. Yep. And this is where the fun starts to veer a little bit, and we should pull it back and call it a day. Awesome. All right. Um, I would invite anybody in the audience, if you have stuff that you want to add, if you want to join us for the games episode that we will do upcoming, reach out, let us know. Email me, tell me the games that you, if you're, if there are specific games you play in your school, shoot me an email, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Tell me the name of the game and how it's played and we will compile them and we will do an episode just on games. Absolutely. Um, and if you want to also include why you play, are, are there specific reasons? Like I talked about, I play jump rope sometimes because it teaches timing. It teaches you know, distancing and figuring out when to jump in and not. So like, I would love to get those. I'd love to get a bunch of emails about games. Totally. Totally. I'm going to get such a long email from Noah. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, yeah. Reach out. So, uh, the last thing I want to say is why we are not telling anyone that they teach wrong. We are not telling anyone that their class culture is wrong. We are inviting you to consider that fun is not only a necessary evil, but furthers nearly every goal that every martial arts practitioner and instructor has. Time is short. Our life on this planet is not lengthy. Why not do all the things you want to do and have fun and recognize that those things that you want to do with relation to martial arts are enhanced through the addition and prioritization of fun. Okay. If you want to reach out to me, it's Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew already said it, but I'll say it again. Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Our social media is at Whistlekick everywhere you can think of. Now, if you like the things that we talk about as they relate to martial arts schools, I work with martial arts schools privately. I help them grow. If you want to be part of that, if you want to have your school grow in terms of dollars or people, I can do that. Reach out to me. If you want to have me or us or maybe some other folk, you know the folks that hang around Whistlekick. Most of us teach seminars. You want to get one, two, seven of us together to teach at your school? We can do that too. Let us know. And of course, we have the Patreon and books and all kinds of things. Don't forget, podcast15 at whistlekick.com. 
that takes us to the end of another episode. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, train, train hard, hard smile, smile, have a great have day. Have a great day.